It's Christmas in July. Today on the channel, we discuss the San Diego Comic-Con reveals from WWE and Mattel. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and it truly is Christmas in July as today, Friday, San Diego Comic-Con announcements from WWE and Mattel were announced today. Normally I'd save this for tomorrow and weekly purchases, but we're going early. I said, you know what, we have to do a special video. There's so much info here, it'll take forever in weekly purchases. We'll do a special video, we'll refer to it on weekly purchases, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel for all the updates. You guys know I do these videos every once in a while, and of course weekly purchases on Saturday. But it truly was Christmas in July today, as we got all kinds of announcements from Mattel and the WWE team, as you'll see here through the pictures we talk about. But let's jump into it. We started off showing our usual cast of characters. Uh, we had Steve Osier and Bill Akina from Mattel, of course. Johnny Gargano, I guess the lead guy in the Mattel Elite Squad at this point. And then, of course, Sam Roberts kind of leading the whole show along. So we had those guys there. And then we quickly recapped the Sergeant Slaughter uh, announcement. Now, you could definitely tell this was a taped uh, presentation. This was taped. This wasn't a live link. This wasn't live. This was taped days ago, as we were probably aware. And you could kind of figure out when we were watching this that it was taped days before. But they recapped the Sergeant Slaughter San Diego Comic Con exclusive. We'll talk more about that in weekly purchases. But you know, some people were really happy. Some people were flat out defeated. Uh, with that one and they talked about it a little bit they didn't talk about the sellout and all that kind of stuff but they talked about it was up for sale they showed the video of sergeant slaughter they did not ask sergeant slaughter the hard-hitting questions like what's a nemesis enforcer but i guess that's for the real journalists like myself to ask sergeant slaughter and we'll have more on that on uh, weekly purchases tomorrow so be prepared for that but like i said they did talk about sergeant slaughter i got my handy dandy ipad we'll go along as we go through this. But we talked about the Sergeant Slaughter. I think we've talked about it at nauseum. We talked about it in a special video on the channel. We talked about it a little bit, uh, weekly purchases last week, and then of course, right now. So we all know about Sergeant Slaughter, that's old hat, but they did premiere some new elites. And unfortunately, if you guys watch online, uh, and you're in the in online wrestling figure community, uh, some of the announcements of new items dropped this week. Dropped earlier before Comic-Con, which really was unfortunate. I've been on that side of the fence. I understand how it goes. Uh, you especially don't want the Walmarts and Targets to know what they're doing and stuff like that. And you just don't want to have reveals out. You want to be able to reveal them in a grand scheme like this. And this is the funnest time to get reveals. But I understand once it's on paper, I don't care what we're talking about. Uh, there's a chance somebody's going to get it. And that's what happened. All that stuff leaked this week. Very, very unfortunate if you ask me. And a lot of these have been out there circulating kind of in the underground for a while. So some of these were known about. Uh, but it's really cool to watch them in this setting, I feel. I feel it's a better experience than just reading names on a paper to get the pictures with them and see the excitement of the presentation. And maybe it's just because I'm from that world and I do some of that as well. Uh, I do some presentations on stuff. And it's exciting when you got new items. I don't care if it's a new wrestling figure, a new grocery item, uh, a new clothing line. Uh, it's exciting to reveal that stuff and do your presentations of all the hard work you've had for a long time putting stuff together uh, from concept to design to finished product. That's where I sit. But we saw some elites here. We saw Rey Mysterio. I don't believe they said what elite line they are, and I think it was in those announced lineups out there. I'm sure we could research that, but we're going just off of what we saw here today. And they showed Rey Mysterio. He's got that traditional shirt, that kind of half-off, cut-off shirt, rubber shirt we've seen many a times. But a cool Rey Mysterio figure. Uh, with the one eye, as you guys remember the old Seth Rollins angle from, I guess that was this year, wasn't it? Or was it last year? But once again, I can't remember my years anymore. They just, with COVID, it went away. But uh, a very cool one-eyed Rey Mysterio, pirate Rey Mysterio, we'll call him. Then we get uh, Matt Riddle, one of my all-time favorites. Maybe my favorite WWE superstar. Uh, like I said on the channel before, I've been a fan of him for a long time. I love that we're getting the soft goods t-shirt. I think that is really cool. And then we're getting a hat as well. Then the flip-flops, of course. Then he's got his uh, Shaka Bra hands. He's ready to go. I'll be happy to have that one in my line. And then we saw Trish Stratus. We know Trish was coming. This is more of the TNA era Trish, when she was a manager, really before she was a wrestler. I'm uh, pretty excited to get that one. And it'll also, I believe, be the Chase, they said. And I think it was going to be in the uh, Canadian gear that she's had before. And we did get a basic of that. I think it was a WrestleMania set maybe two years ago. Uh, so some people will be able to replace that basic if they want to with an Elite. But... There was the first three, and then we were joined by Adam Cole. Adam Cole joined the panel, is what it is. You know, for me, it's funny. I, I don't get too excited about these guys joining the panel anymore. 
I don't know. I'm here for the wrestling news. I'm not here for the the wrestling figure news. I'm not here for the wrestler kind of arguing about hand signals and stuff like that. But I know they have to ham it up. They kind of got to live the gimmick a little bit. But we got a long back and forth between Johnny Gargano and Adam Cole. Who has the better hand signs? Uh, gangs, you know, gangs, whenever they get involved, it's the Bloods, it's the Crips, it's the Garganos, it's the... Adam Coles, it's the way, it's the Undisputed Era. You just got to be careful when you get gangs in the same room or at least on the same conference call. You know, trouble breaks out. And that's exactly what we saw here with gang symbols being thrown and threatened around. It was it was a crazy time. You, you had to be there. If you didn't, uh, you weren't. So there you go. But we did get an announcement of Adam Cole Elite. Uh, no stranger to the Elite line. We're going to get more Adam Cole Elites. We're getting the regular one with a brand new head, sc uh, head scan. He's got kind of a smirking face to him there. But the one that got me excited and the one that I've been talking about, we talked about when we unboxed the Undisputed Era versions of them, we needed this uh, camouflage trunks Adam Cole, and it did not win that fan takeover vote, which was just shocking to me. Uh, I, I literally thought they should have taken the, the power out of the fans' hands after messing up that vote. But all is right. It's just going to take a little bit longer. But we'll finally have the camo version of the Undisputed Era. Uh, they did not mention what elite lineup this was or if it was a special lineup, but I think it's a traditional elite lineup. But we're getting Adam Cole, so exciting there. And then our attention turned back to Sergeant Slaughter. And no, they didn't ask, what's the Nemesis Enforcer? Try to get to the hard facts of Sergeant Slaughter. But 2021 is really the year of Sergeant Slaughter. And we'll talk more about it on Weekly Purchases tomorrow. Uh, let me tell you. But uh, Sarge getting a Masters of the Universe style figure. He's getting that Ultimate Edition figure. He's getting uh, two Valiverse figures uh, in the G.I. Joe kind of companion world out there. And now we're getting another elite one. We're getting the Iraqi Sergeant Slaughter. This is a most wanted one. Jax did it way back in the day. That was a big miss if you ask me that two-pack. Check out my Classic Superstars reviews on the channel if you missed those. We go over that pack of the two-pack Toys R Us exclusive. But this one looks pretty solid. I'm excited to get this one. We'll see if uh, we get any more, if we get a title belt with that one maybe, possibly. We'll see if that happens, but this is Rule Breaker Slaughter, Iraqi Sympathizer Slaughter. Uh, I'm hoping they build out the whole clan. We do know Colonel Mustafa is coming. Hopefully General Adnan is. I believe he's got to be, uh, but it should be a really cool way to uh, commemorate this era of Sergeant Slaughter. I wouldn't say a forgotten era, but boy, was it a shocking era. Shocking. So it's the year of Sergeant Slaughter, so let's just all celebrate the Sarge. And then they showed uh, Nia Jax with Women's Tag Team title, and she is going to be the chase. Now, if you guys remember back to the old Elite Nia Jax, that was a very solid figure, and actually was one of the first figures to come with multiple heads. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming they're going to use a lot of the reuse from that, a new head sculpt, as we can see here. But we're getting her in kind of the reddish color, and then we're also getting her in the purple chase edition. But then the next one that popped the world, and it popped everybody in the leaked lineups as well, is we are getting the goon. Talk about a D-level character, but this is some of the charm that classic superstars used to bring us back in the day with uh, MVP, Abe Knuckleball, Schwartz, and stuff like that. Um, so very interesting, we're getting the goon. we got the new hockey gloves that are going to fit on like boxing gloves, if you're familiar with that Mr. T, Roddy Piper 2-pack. Uh, a hockey stick with it, a very, very cool idea. They did say he will have a soft goods hockey jersey, but I don't know if you guys look real close at this render here. To me, this looks like Randy Orton with a weird face on him with a, kind of a wig. It looks like Randy Orton to me, so I'm sure it'll be tooled a little bit more, but it almost looks like they used Randy Orton as the base for the goon. I don't know. I believe, wasn't the goon Scott Irwin? Is that his name? I remember from GWF days, I believe, as a little kid. I, I believe that's who it was, but it looks a lot like Randy Orton to me, and he's got John Cena shorts on, but the hockey jersey is going to take that one to the next level. That's my feelings and thoughts there. Um, so very excited there. Then we were joined by Dominic Mysterio. We were joined by Dominic, who was very excited. We knew he had a figure coming, so we knew this was going to be the debut where we'd kind of first see Dominic's figure, and that's exactly what we saw. And man, is this a colorful one. You guys know I love bright, colorful figures. I love tattoos. He's got Rey Mysterio on his arm. Get a tattoo of your dad. I might get a tattoo of my dad on the back. It might be really cool looking. We'll see. Uh, but he does come with a kendo stick, uh, a lot of part of that angle, you know, with the kendo stick and all that he had. But this is his first elite figure. Pretty cool to have a father and son elite team with him and Ray, both in the same lineups and stuff. I don't know if they're going to be in the same series, but we'll see. But Ray, or Dominic, more like it, is getting his first elite figure. But that's not all. That's not all. They talked about Dominic is going to get his very own Build-A-Figure. And I thought this was a joke at first when they announced it. 
but apparently it wasn't a joke. We're getting a Build-A-Figure Dominic. It looks like they're using that Hornswoggle mold. And it's Dominic as a little kid. So can you imagine getting a figure of you currently and then getting one from when you were like eight or nine years old? Uh, that's pretty crazy in itself, I thought. But that's what we're getting. We're getting Dominic Mysterio as a child as a Build-A-Figure. I guess you put him with your Ray and Eddie. Very strange, but pretty cool. And I'm all for Build-A-Figures. I think they've been listening to the channel. We'll get into that a little bit more here soon. But then they announced some more Elites, and we knew these were coming. We'd seen of leaks of these for a couple of months ago, but we are getting RVD as triumphant return to the Elite lineup. And we're getting RVD in his patented Tiger Stripes, maybe one of, it, one of if not his most famous outfit of all time. RVD with the Tiger Stripes. Of course, we're getting a chair with him. you got to give RVD a chair. Do that Van Daminator. He's got the fingers, or the thumbs, I should say, for the RVD, uh, you know, uh, uh, RVD logo he does or not logo whatever you call it hand gesture geez easy for me to say but then we're getting a very rare treat we talk about this a lot of times on the channel Hulk Hogan returning to the regular core elite lineup this does not happen very often usually the major players the flares the Austins uh, the Warriors, the Hogans, they are saved for retailer exclusives. And, the, you know, we've talked at nauseum about the reason for that. So it's a little strange to see Hogan here in a traditional elite lineup. I don't know. I'm playing devil's advocate here. But my first guess why he's in a traditional lineup and not exclusive is maybe a retailer is a little scared because we know Hogan's had some controversy over the last couple of years. And maybe Walmart, Target, whoever, maybe didn't want to hang their hat on Hulk Hogan. I don't know that for a fact, but that's just kind of a guess. And But anyways, either way, we're getting Hogan, and this is Hogan when he wrestled HBK, HBK, Shawn Michaels. This will go great with that Jax figure, that Ruthless Aggression WrestleMania figure from back in the day with HBK dressed as Hogan. That is a sleeper Jax figure. I strongly recommend you having that in your collection. But uh, this Hogan looks phenomenal. Uh, I love the boas. I love the scarf, or the scarf, the head head dress, head band. What do you call that? Do-rag, jeez. Can't talk today. Do rag, sunglasses, weight belt, extra hands. Hogan's loaded for bear. He's ready to go. And then we also saw some sneak peek renders. These aren't colored out. These are uh, got a way to go, it seems, a little bit. So I'm guessing these are probably spring 2022 items. Uh, that's just my gut tells me. But we're getting carrying cross. We've already got one elite recently. We've got a basic of him. But we're getting him in his gladiator outfit. He kind of wears those gladiator tights and trunks. Uh, so we're getting that. And then we're getting a burnt fiend. And you guys know, scary wrestlers, big figures, tattoos, masks, face paint. He checks a lot of boxes. So this is going to be a popular one. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of Bray Wyatt. We haven't seen a lot of The Fiend lately. I do feel we needed a figure break from The Fiend, but this one everybody will want, uh, the kind of burned up Fiend. I think this is a really cool idea. I'm glad we're getting this in figure form. And then probably the biggest news of the day. I don't know how it couldn't be. I think I heard, I, I listened closely, I paused the video, and I just heard like an eruption. Like it was like some sonic boom. And I think it was everybody across the world celebrating in unison that we are finally getting a Chainsaw Charlie figure. Yes, Terry Funk coming back to the elite line. Chainsaw Charlie figure righting some wrongs. We should have had this figure many moons ago. I'm excited to get Chainsaw Charlie. Anytime we get Terry Funk represented in the line, man, sign me up all day long. I'm going to have to have a couple of these Terry Funks. That's just the way I roll. does come with a chainsaw, so you can carve people up left and right if you want. Uh, maybe he'll be in that same set with The Fiend. It almost looks like uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre brought together. It looks like Leatherface, and maybe you get Chop Top as a figure. Uh, if you've never seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, you're missing out. Check that one out, fellas. Uh, but yeah, we saw those. And then we, um, what else did we see there? We saw Bianca Belair join the uh, video. That was an interesting one. We saw Bianca come on. She, I think she'd been on before, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we had seen her in the past, but she came on. She is getting a new head sculpt. I believe this is the Royal Rumble attire she wore. Really cool that she has removable earrings. That's a first for the Elite line. I can see these being extremely expensive earrings in the future as people will lose those things and they'll be selling them and say, oh, is it complete? It's missing the earrings. I can just see it. Comes with glasses, extra head, of course, uh, extra hands, the women's title belt, uh, very colorful gear. They talked a lot about in the panel how she designs her own gear and all that kind of fun stuff too. So that was interesting. I did forget to mention NXT champion Renee Gonzalez, or Raquel Gonzalez, is getting a figure. They showed her gray rendering figure. I'm not sure on that one. Uh, she looks a little short. She's like six foot one. She's a tall chick. Um, she's about six one, so it looks a little small. I don't know. I want to see some color on that one to give my final opinion, but that was the only one that really looked a little off to me. 
today. Uh, I don't know about you guys. Feel free to leave me comments on any of this, what you guys think. Uh, they also talked about the Royal Rumble figures out there. And Royal Rumble, uh, exciting figures, as you guys know. Uh, every year, those have seemed to be a Target exclusive. And they didn't really say, I, at least I missed it, possibly. But it didn't seem to be the Royal Rumble figures were going to be a Target exclusive. But I would have to think they would be. But last year was a bit of a miss. They hit, and then they totally disappeared. Then we saw them on Amazon. We saw them on Ringside. But they did make the announcement going forward, the SummerSlam... And that's where Dominic Mysterio comes in. He's going to be the SummerSlam build a figure uh, for next year, which that SummerSlam this year is just starting to hit pegs at Walmart. Check weekly purchases and uh, my figure hunting video out for some more on that SummerSlam lineup. But uh, next year will be Dominic in the SummerSlam one. And then they showed us Jimmy Hart. And he's going to be in the Royal Rumble gear. So I think that's cool. And that's something I've been calling for for a long time on the channel. I think build a figures are a great way to get some C and D level characters and some managers into the line and make people buy the full line where maybe they wouldn't in the past. I just think it's a smart business practice. I know a lot of people do hate it because it makes them buy figures they don't want. But uh, if you're in Mattel's shoes and you're trying to make money, I think it's a slam dunk idea. It makes all the sense in the world to me. So we're getting Jimmy Hart. We're getting him to go along with our honky man, honky tonk man. I just hope this means we got Greg the Hammer Valentine in rhythm and blues gear coming soon. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of people screaming for that, myself included. Get us rhythm and blues. We need it in the line. But Jimmy Hart will be the build a figure. But then you know we're gonna have Earthquake with the old can Canadian flag on his stomach. That was kind of the first Canadian earthquake, if you guys all remember that. We're getting Yokozuna. Not a ton of meat on the bone if you have the prior Yokozuna figures, but new head sculpt. He's got the salt bucket. Uh, he's a big figure, literally, and big as far as former WWE champion, of course. So I can see needing to get him back out on the pegs. And you guys know big figures. People love them, and they buy them up. Uh, and then we got Big E, which that might be the dog of the line. I think Big E and Dakota Kai will be the two dogs of that line. I don't know if that's the strongest Royal Rumble lineup we've ever seen before. Uh, I like Earthquake. I like Yokozuna enough. Dakota Kai is fine. Big E's fine, but we get a lot of Big E's. And Dakota Kai is not known to the whole entire world, I, I would say. Um, so it'll be interesting how this performs. But I think you throw that Jimmy Hart build a figure in there, that's going to clean up some of the Big E's and Dakota Kai's, possibly. That's at least how I see it. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how they go with that. Uh, then we started talking WrestleMania elites, and I believe this whole lineup was leaked uh, in the week, as we saw on paper, but they only announced two of them, and there will be a Build-A-Figure. It sounds like it's Vince McMahon Build-A-Figure from WrestleMania 3. I say you can never have enough uh, Vince McMahons in your line. Uh, we'll probably do a top five very soon, top five Vince McMahon figures. He's got a lot of good sleeper figures out there, but this will be another one we can add to the bunch. We're also getting my twin brother, AJ Styles, and our beautiful locks of hair. You know me and AJ. I'm either the AJ Styles or I'm the big show. Uh, that's what I always get people telling in the comments all the time. But we're getting AJ Styles. This might be a great custom for me. I put a Motorhead t-shirt on this AJ Styles, some regular hands, and... What do you know? You got your very own Kyle Peterson See You Later t-shirt. Uh, this would be a good one, but this obviously is from WrestleMania with his match with The Undertaker. Uh, I think it needs to be depicted. It's uh, Taker's final match. I think that makes sense to put AJ in there, and AJ's kind of had a, a lull. We got a lot of AJs in the Elite line, and we've had a lull over the last year, so it'll be welcome to have AJ back in there. Uh, maybe on a fairly regular basis. I'm kind of surprised there's nothing uh, AJ related coming out anytime soon. But like I said, we have gotten a lot of AJs over the last couple of years. We also saw Ringside Collectibles exclusive Tommaso Ciampa. An interesting one. I don't know. I, I like Tommaso Ciampa. I got nothing against the guy. Uh, we could be fast friends, I'm sure. And this one's cool because it comes with a mask. You know what they say about masks. People love them. Uh, especially me. But an interesting Ringside Collectibles exclusive is we usually get legends or some off the beaten path things on um, Ringside exclusives. This one, not so much. So I don't know how well this one will do for Ringside. I guess uh, the proof would be in the numbers. How many people order this one? Do they need this Tommaso Ciampa? It almost feels like he didn't make an elite line and they had that extra spot and they said, hey, Ringside, would you take this one? A lot like that NXT Andrade figure from a few years back kind of akin to that in my eyes. Uh, I will definitely pick this one up, but I'm not sure if this one's going to be for everyone, like the uh, two faces of the Undertaker and uh, or Kane, you know, Kane Undertaker 201 pack. That's an exclusive everybody seems to want. Uh, things like that. I don't know how well Tommaso Ciampa will do, but 
Time will tell. They didn't announce when that was going up exactly, but it is coming. Uh, they also announced uh, Kevin Nash. Well, they didn't really announce it. We announced it way back, but they said this will be up for pre-order today, Friday on Target.com. So make sure you're looking at your Target app, get your pre-orders in, you get Junkyard Dog, Roddy Piper, Kevin Nash, and of course, Billy Gunn from the Legends line. So I thought that was cool enough. But then they officially announced the next Le Legend series after that one. And we're getting Triple H to go with that Billy Gunn. You know X-Pac and Road Dogg are coming down the line, so be prepared for that. We got Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. It's the year of the Cowboy as well. And I saw the Cowboy this week in person do his thing. Uh, but we're getting Cowboy here back in the Elite line. I love that he comes with boxing gloves as well. That is a super awesome touch there. So we're getting that one. We're getting Hurricane. I always think of this one as the Dark Hurricane. Uh, it's the Hurricane we had a basic of way back in the original first basics we got that hurricane now we're getting it as an elite so that works a lot and then the one i'm most excited about in this line is jake the snake roberts you guys know i did the jake snake roberts top five my favorite five favorite jake roberts figures this one would probably be very high on the list if i had this in hand right now maybe we'll have to redo that list again one of these days but i love this era of jake the snake with the cobra i just felt like that was the most dangerous jake uh, the scariest Jake. I just, when I think Jake the Snake Roberts, this is what I want. And uh, we're finally getting it. I love the Cobra coming here. He's got the snake handler glove. He's got extra hands. I love the tights. Then, of course, he's getting the chase. He's got the gray pants from his WCW match. I think that was the Coal Miners Glove match, possibly. But we're getting two Jakes there. And it's interesting times with Jake and Billy Gunn getting WWE figures while they're in AEW. But that's just all contracts and legal stuff and all that fun stuff nobody really cares about. But some strong Legends lineups. We've seen leaked images of, or not leaked images, but leaked lists of the future ones. So be prepared for those. That'll be uh, some really heavy hitters coming out there in the future. And one I've been screaming that I want forever. So I'm happy to get that one in the future. But we'll talk about that when they're officially announced down the line. Uh, but then they turn their attention to Ultimate Editions, and this one's interesting. It's a Target exclusive Ultimate Edition, and it's old Dave Batista, Ruthless Aggression Era stalwart himself, Dave Batista, three heads, you got the soft goods shirt, you got the title belt, all the hands you could ever want, and then some. And you got the Raw and SmackDown contract. Rewrite history in your own fig fed if you'd like to, but... Dave Batista coming to the Ultimate line, I'd say that's deserved. I, I don't know anybody else that deserves one as much as Dave Batista. Yeah, there's a lot actually, but Batista fits in with the Ultimates. Those are the tippy top guys. Batista, like him or not, was a tippy top guy for many a year. And then we got one that's going to make everybody excited. And it's been a lot of discussion on the channel lately, especially in my daily Star Wars videos. I talk about capes all the time. I can't wait till I hit 65, and that's when I'm going to bust out the cape. I'm going to wear a cape on a daily basis. I think you have to be about 65 to be able to look okay and accessible, acceptable in this um, community in a cape at about 65. But that's my plan as I see it right now. And capes make a figure always better. And here we go. We got Kane in a cape. That's going to just take that cane up a notch. A lot more people are going to want this cane now. Extra heads, or an extra head, I should say. You got his voice box, and then you got extra hands. But this is kind of based on the original promo art for Kane. And I think there was one picture of him with the cape on, which is a really neat touch. And it's a way to make this ultimate different, as we've got so many canes over the years. I just think this is a fabulous touch and a fabulous idea by the Mattel team to give us Kane and his cape. And then you can take the cape off, off of course, and just have regular Kane. So I think that is pretty cool. And then in the same wave, it sounds like we're getting The Undertaker. So very fitting to get those ultimates together. Uh, this is a great version of Undertaker. You guys know I'm a mean Mark Callis guy and I'm a biker Undertaker guy. But as far as gothic dead man Undertaker, I always liked this era best. I always thought this was his best outfit. I wasn't here for original Undertaker. I just didn't think I, I didn't really like that one uh, where, you know, came out Survivor Series. I mean, it was all right, but it just didn't knock my socks off like so many kids of my age did. Um, and then the Phantom of the Opera Undertaker was ridiculous for me. But then you got to the scary ministry taker. I thought that was where he stepped up a notch. And that was his best Undertaker Undertaker time for me outside of the Mean Mark Callis. And of course, the um, American Badass Undertaker. But that's a very cool one with the two extra heads, the, the gown. I guess we'll call it a gown. Uh, just a very awesome Undertaker. And this could be, this could end up being the best Undertaker figure ever, ever not... In the Mattel line, at least, I'll say. I'll, I'll at least go that far, but uh, I just like the looks of this one a lot. And like I said, it's not even my favorite era of Undertaker, and that's how much I think this one looks really good. 
Then we talked about Chainsaw Charlie earlier, and then I heard that rumbling again, and it was because everybody was screaming about Ultimate Warrior. Uh, the fan takeover, the fan vote for the Amazon-exclusive Ultimate Edition Ultimate Warrior. I mean, they named the line after him. The Ultimate Edition is Ultimate Warrior. I don't think there's a stretch there at all. Uh, I personally voted for Survivor Series 1990. Honestly, you know I would take any three of these. No Warrior Left Behind is the motto, and that's going to continue with this one. As we are getting WrestleMania 6 Ultimate Warrior, I am not surprised at this one. I know a lot of people are angry about it. We already had that in the Elite form. Well, this is Ultimate, so it is different. This is the most iconic time of the Ultimate Warrior. People knew they'd get the Intercontinental and World title. I mean, it's just so iconic that people know about this. So I think it's just an easy vote. You throw those three options out there without a picture next to it, most people are going to say, oh yeah, WrestleMania 6, that's when he won the title. That's what I'm voting for. They can't picture what SummerSlam 89 or 90 is. That's just not the way people work. Um, so we're getting WrestleMania 6. I don't hate it. I would have rather had the Survivor Series or the 1991 in the white. But like we've seen before, I think we'll get those eventually. I think that either Elite or Ultimate will get those eventually. I do love that Warrior comes with a non-face painted head. Uh, that's a point of difference there. I think that is pretty cool. Obviously, Warrior's going to sell all day long. Everybody needs multiple Warriors in their collection, so I think this is a total slam dunk. I can't wait to pick that one up. And that kind of concluded the Ultimate Edition talk for the day. Then we moved on to Masters of the WWE Universe, and they showed us Series 7, Walmart exclusive, as you guys all know and we're all aware. Uh, I'm very excited about this. I love He-Man. I love these figures from the word go. Lots of people have come around on these in the last year or so. Uh, tons of He-Man collectors that don't buy wrestling figures buy these because of the correlation to He-Man. So I think it's a solid, solid set, this one. Pre-order goes up Saturday morning, so tomorrow, if you're watching this on Friday, be prepared at walmart.com to pick these up. Uh, that's Series 7. But then they announced Series 8, and I went from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows. I saw this, and I said, wait a minute, this is just a rehashed. We're getting Rey Mysterio Stratos. We got this before. It's just repainted. We're getting Stone Cold Steve Austin, which is identical to the ring one, but then they added a trap jaw face and a trap jaw arm and belt to him. So there's not, between those two, that's just pure reuse. There's no new characters, no nothing exciting. But then they did show us China. That is something new based on She-Ra. I thought that was cool. But then I said, wait a minute, they only have three figures. Where's the fourth one? This truly tell, told me right when I saw this, uh-oh, this is the dying day. And it's been a lot of rumors going around, especially in the He-Man Origin fan community, that the Origin line is done and is going to be over with. And it makes you wonder a little bit. Uh, but this one is definitely done. Because Steve Osier from Mattel said, hey, it was a good run, but the Series 8 will be the final series in the Masters of WWE Universe figures. And I was pretty bummed on that because I have a complete collection, Min on Card and uh, Min on Card and Unpunched, I should say. And a loose set of these. So these are right in my wheelhouse. I absolutely love these things. Um, but they're gone. And I was like, well, good thing is there's so much stuff coming out in the future. I'm going to save money. And I can put that money I was putting towards those towards something different. So I said, hey, it's a win-win. But then they immediately smacked you right in the face with a punch uh, right across the table. They said, hey, but we have the new WWE Superstars line. And I was like, oh, okay, where's this going? And I immediately thought, hey, there's been rumors of Bendems coming out. And I said, hey, I'm all out on Bendems. I don't need any Bendems. So I was a little bit, I was interested. Hey, what's the Superstars going to be about? I was a little sad. I was a little happy with losing my Masters of the Universe Origins figures uh, from the WWE because, hey, I'll miss the line, but I'm saving money. But then they announced the Superstars line, and well, here we go again. We're right back. So it's basically the He-Man figures continuing on, but dropping the He-Man Masters of the Universe gimmick. Now we're just getting straight up wrestling figures in this style. Very, very interesting. I think you will still have He-Man fans grabbing these figures for customs and for body parts and stuff like that, and people that collect just that style of figure. So I think you'll still carry over a lot of those He-Man fans. You'll definitely lose some, but you'll carry some. But now you might gain more wrestling fans buying these. As, you know, we're getting uh, Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, Honky Tonk Man, uh, three very solid ones. The Honky Tonk Man was probably the one I'm most excited about. Is I've always loved Honky Tonk Man. Uh, but we're getting Hogan, of course, and Ric Flair. And then we're getting Bray Wyatt as well, an interesting Bray Wyatt, kind of a deep-cut Bray Wyatt, I would say. Um, magician Bray Wyatt, we'll call him. But they're basically the same scale, same everything else, uh, same size packaging, you name it across the board, uh, with a cool throwback, almost LJN-inspired packaging card art. Uh, nostalgia's in, so these are very, very interesting. They showed the Honky Tonk Man. These are Walmart exclusives, so they're taking the place of the Origins line. So really, at the end of the day, nothing is changing 
with the origin He-Man style wrestling figures, they're just getting more wrestling centric, which He-Man fans won't like, like I said, but wrestling fans will love. So I think the sales will continue. First series of anything is always really hard to get. People want them. I can see a lot of people jumping in because, hey, I could start a new collection. And then they jump out after a few series like we see with the AEW right now. Uh, but very interesting. So I went from the highest to highs. I, I don't know if that's totally the case. Highest to highs. But I was like, hey, at least I'm saving some money. But now that same money is just being transferred over to these, how it's going to go. I just got to ask myself, do I need a mint on card set of these or not? Or just loose? Uh, I got to answer that to myself one of these days. Then we jumped into the Hollywood figures. Another terribly kept secret. We saw images leak. These are also going up on Walmart.com on Saturday. I take these akin to the Ghostbuster figures we got as an exclusive at Walmart two years ago. Uh, same headspace, same kind of thing going on with these. It's just a one-off Walmart line. Not one-off, I guess. We are getting Series 2, which they did talk about. But we're getting John Cena. What was that from Hobbs and Shaw or Fast and Furious? And we're getting The Rock from Fast and Furious or Hobbs and Shaw. I don't know. I've never seen any of those movies. I don't even know what these represent. I have no clue. No clue. I've never seen a Fast and Furious in my life. Uh, but I will buy both these. You guys know I collect all the elites, so I got to keep keep pace with that. Now, I do think if you play the long game on these, you'll definitely get these on clearance. I, I think there's no way around it. Maybe I'll be uh, shocked, and maybe that won't be the case, but you guys know these will hit Walmarts. Everybody will want them. They'll grab them. Then they're going to restock. Then they're going to restock again, and I don't know how well they'll do. We saw those Ghostbusters go to pretty deep clearance. They went to ringside collectibles. I kind of think the same thing will happen here. But the jewel of this set and the no-brainer of this one for me is the Rowdy Roddy Piper. NECA, they live. We got that earlier this year. Now we're getting a WWE Elite version. Sign me up all day for anything Roddy Piper. Just a cool figure, a great movie, uh, a childhood favorite movie of mine. So I'm very happy to get this one. I'm all in on the Piper. But then they even announced Series 2, which I was a little bit shocked because I never thought there would be more than one. Uh, I thought it'd be just similar to the Ghostbusters, but nope, they're getting after it. We're getting the Rock Scorpion King figure, kind of a throwbacks to the Titan Tron, I think, had a Scorpion King figure back in the day. I passed on that, but we'll get that, so I know a lot of Rock completists will want that as well. Then we saw Roman Reigns. I didn't even know he was in Hobbs and Shaw 2 or Fast and the Furious. Uh, it tells you how in tune I am in that world. Uh, but that's interesting. But, you know, there's a lot of reuse. They have Roman Reigns uh, coming out all the time. Now you can get a Roman Reigns figure and you just pop a skirt on him or whatever you want to call it. A uh, necklace and everything. And, hey, bam, we got this. But the jewel of this whole line, I would say, would be Roddy Piper. But, no, they came out with the big hot announcement. We are getting Andre the Giant as Bigfoot. I love me some Bigfoot. I'm sure you guys aren't surprised at that. As a little kid, I remember watching In Search Of with Leonard Nimoy on TBS uh, during the summer days. I always loved Unsolved Mysteries. I always loved cryptozoology stuff. Uh, one of these days, I'm going to go up to Wisconsin. I'm going to finally capture Bear Wolf. Look him up. Uh, but I love Bigfoot. I love all that kind of stuff. So sign me up all day long. Andre the Giant, $6 million man. Before my time, of course, but I've seen the episodes and reruns. I've seen pictures. A very iconic Andre the Giant acting role i guess we'd say so i think it is tremendous we're getting this sign me up all day long i'll take two of these that's how much i like it i hope we get more cool stuff like that then the talk turned to retros and a lot of people were anticipating what is going to be announced on retros where are we going to go from here and i gotta say there wasn't a ton of announcements but there was a few things of course Previously, we saw Mean Gene Okerlund, and we saw Roddy Piper. Those were slam dunks. Those hit us all. Piper's got a removable kilt, which I know a lot of people like. But they're adding Cowboy Bob Orton to the mix, and they're adding Mr. T to the mix with brand new air, airplane spin uh, performance art that he can do. So uh, that's interesting. We're getting a new mold out of this. So that, that is pretty cool. But those four are going to be the first ones. And a lot of us thought this is where it was going to go. It makes total sense. I think they really listened to the demand and feedback out there. And these retros are going to go to MattelCreations.com. Sounds like we're not going to be ordering these till early in 2022, which is okay. I think it gives a lot of us in our wallets a break. It lets a lot of the lines like Heels and Faces, Zombie Sailor, some of the Cella Toy ones, get a little stronger foothold, gives them a little bit of time to get some of their figures out and maybe make people buy them that were saying, I can't buy those because these retros are coming out. Now those retros are going to be ordered six, seven months from now. I think it does help the Zombie Sailors of the world get some more sales in the meantime, so it's good for them. And uh, I'm in no means uh, a huge rush to get those retros. I will definitely pick those up. It sounds like they're going to come in a four-pack. As you guys know, I do have a Min on Card retro set. Uh, I guess I'd have to get two sets of these is the way I see it right now. Um, 
Just not sure where I'm going to display them. I got room for about nine more retros. And after that, I don't have any room on the wall. It's kind of blocked. So I don't know. I'll figure it out. I always do. Uh, but then we had our attention turned to the ring. And we had a whole video about that earlier this week. I did a NECA kind of Mattel Creations uh, special bonus video here on the channel. But we talked about the ring. We get Kevin Nash. We get the new generation ring. We get the new generation light up stage. Uh, and that's if you have 5,000 backers. Well, then they came in hot and they said, hey, we're going to announce tier two and 7,000 backers. If we get that, we get Doink the Clown, Ultimate Edition Doink the Clown. Three head scans on this one. A pretty cool figure as far as Doink the Clowns go. Feels weird to have him in an Ultimate Edition line, but it makes sense with this package. And this is the only way to get Ultimate Edition Kevin Nash and Doink in this. Uh, I got to tell you guys, unless it doesn't get backed, I could see this tooling being reused in the future. But if this gets back, this is basically your only chance to get these two. I don't foresee them upsetting their customer base. They're hardcore fans. They're not going to upset these guys and re-release these outside of this package. So if you wanted those two, you better get them now with the ring. Then they announced the uh, 8K backers, and that's just extra ring skirts. And that one really did absolutely nothing for me. Uh, I'm all for a ring. I feel you need at least one elite scale ring, but how many do you need? I mean, two AEW real, real rings. You got the SmackDown ring, the Raw ring. I have the old NXT ring. I'm not a ring collector. Rings take up a ton of space. I don't know where I'm going to put them. New Generation for me was not my wheelhouse. That wasn't my loving age. That was probably the most down I've ever been on the WWE product in all my years, really, uh, if, if I think about it. But uh, I know a lot of people love it. A lot of people love this wheelhouse. Like, I love, you know, the late 80s NWA, early WCW, or, of course, the Ultimate Warrior age. Uh, there's people that feel the new generation is that to them, and I don't disparage that at all. I understand that. But I got to tell you guys, we got to vote. You got to vote with your wallet. You got to back this. Uh, if this does not go through, I don't foresee them doing this anymore. That being said, I see no way this doesn't go through. Uh, you'll get a lot of backers right away. It might take a little time, but I have a feeling maybe Ringside Collectibles will step in. We see that all the time with the HasLab ones. We see big bad toy stores of the world, Entertainment Earth, other companies like that step in. Hey, I want 200 of those uh, Sentinels for our store. And I think you'll see that with wrestling too, and maybe other places will buy them as well. So I think it'll get backed. And even if it's shy of a couple of hundred, I could see Mattel saying, you know what, send it to production. Let's just say it's done. Let's get it out there. 5000 isn't a lot. It's a $250 price point. I think they understood that uh, they'll, they'll get it backed. And 250 is, I know some people have complained about the price, but that is really pretty reasonable. When you get two Ultimate figures, there's 60 bucks right there. Uh, you throw tax on there, stuff like that. Extra ring skirts, let's say that would be $10, $15 tax, all that kind of stuff there. A ring, you're looking at $125, $140 with inflation. So, I mean, you're right in that wheelhouse of $250, and then it is limited edition. This isn't going to be 20000 of these released. I mean, maybe 10000 after all is said and done. So this is truly a limited edition item. So you got to remember that as part of all this, that this isn't going to be easy to get. This is only for the hardcore, hardcore fans. And even if you're on the fence, I would say back it and you can always sell it. As I've seen with all these crowdfunding things over the years, you can double your money selling this afterwards. And you know what? If you don't want this and you're planning on selling it, at least it helps others with this thing getting backed. Uh, and because we all need this to get backed, because who knows what we might get in the future. Could we get, you know, the Night of the Skywalkers? Could we get the Night of the Skywalkers play set one of these days? We can have the scaffold matches. Uh, maybe we'll get a real scale Hell in the Cell. Uh, this opens up the doors of possibility to the future. Big centers, big events, big rings, big cages. Maybe even uh, one-off figures. I could see, you know, some deep cut figures maybe getting released via this crowdfunding. But it all starts here. It's got to start here. It's got to be backed. Um, it'll be interesting where it goes, but it sounds like they just need 5,000 backers. I don't think that'll be a problem. 8,000 will be interesting. I don't know if the ring skirts was enough meat on the bone to get to that next level. It does nothing for me. Uh, 7,000 sounds great with Doink. I guess I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't lose sleep at night if I didn't get those ring skirts at eight, but I'm really hoping it gets to seven. I think that's a great number. I hope seven K and I think it'll happen with Doink Ultimate. And that looks like a very phenomenal Doink with three different heads and all that kind of stuff going on. So there's a lot to like about this package. There's a lot to not like about this package, but I recommend everybody back this thing because it's gonna help us get stuff in the future. And like I said, you're gonna have no problem selling this if uh, the day comes and when it comes in the mail, you don't want it. You can easily flip this and get your money back at the minimum, most likely probably double your money. 
But then it's the one of the things too, it's a lot like the Super 7 model. You back this thing, you pay the money, you're probably gonna have to wait six months to a year to get these. I'm not sure what Mattel's timetable, they never really said, but Super 7, it takes a year plus. You know, the HasLab took a year. So I would assume this can be right in that wheelhouse. So you gotta remember that too. Do you like people sitting on your money for a year? I personally don't, but sometimes you gotta do it uh, to get what you want. So there it is. Man, oh man, what a day to be alive. Whoa, hold the phone, stop the clock, stop the presses. Right as I'm finishing up my video, of course, WWE.com comes in hot with pictures of new releases from Mattel. And I was just closing up the video here and I was talking about, hey, there was no basics. There was no showdown packs. I was kind of surprised some of the elites that have been announced we didn't see pictures of. Well, that all changed. I immediately get done with this. I go to WWE.com, bam, what is that? So we continue going we're going to talk a little more ultimates a little bit more elites showdown two packs and of course basics so a lot being revealed today i thought we had a marathon video already well it continues let's just jump right into it one thing i did forget to talk about though was they did show pictures of the zodiac of the dungeon of doom fame wcw brother brood eye brutus bar beefcake face paint, tassels, sign me up all day long. This is a deep WCW cut. A lot of people will enjoy this figure, myself included. We can build out that Dungeon of Doom now. We got Kamala. We got the Giant in that Ric Flair Showdown 2-pack. Uh, what else we got? We got Kevin Sullivan from Jack's Class Superstars. You got to have that one. Oh, yeah. Of course, the Shark, Ghost of San Diego Comic-Con Pass, as we got that back in the day. I think it was sold via Target back then. Uh, so the Dungeon of Doom is coming along. I'll have a sick Dungeon of Doom set up there. But the Zodiac, Zodiac is coming. Uh, Brother Brood Eye, very, very cool to get that one in the Elite line. I almost missed that one. But then, um, like I said, WWE.com announced uh, some pictures of some upcoming basics. Say what you want about basics. I think Mattel has done a great job in the recent months switching the focus of basics, giving us a lot of first time in the line, superstars in the basic line, to force a lot of elite collectors and others buy those figures and then get their eventual elite down the line. And in some cases, the basic figure is the only figure a superstar will get. So it is always a gamble out there. Basics are relatively easy to get. You just play that long game. I don't pre-order my basics. I pick them up off Amazon or in the store if at all possible. Uh, but we did see Santos Escobar, Raul Mendoza, and Joaquin Wild. So we did see pictures of those guys. It looks like we're getting masked versions. We're getting face paint on Escobar. We're getting the suit with the mask from that NXT angle. Pretty cool. Uh, quite the army here. I'm not even sure how many figures that is. I guess I'm thinking four figures here with ultimate heads. Or maybe they... I hope not, but I have a bad feeling they very well maybe have the suited ones with the masked head as the chase with the mask, and the other one is the regular. Ooh, that's going to force you to buy a lot of those. But I guess customizer's dream, you have some suited figures. Maybe you can make some other figures out of that. Maybe it won't be so bad, but uh, I didn't see anything in the write-ups there to announce what it was. But a lot of... Uh, Santos Escobar's group for NXT getting represented in the basic line. We also saw Keith Lee. He's been a basic before. This one doesn't excite me too much. It is singlet version of uh, Keith Lee uh, for those keeping track at home. We did see Mandy Rose. Uh, I'll get this one. I'm a big Mandy Rose fan, as you guys can imagine. I thought they announced she was going to be a chase, but nothing was shown here, so at least we got one Mandy Rose there. Uh, Isaiah Swerve Scott, we're getting two of his. A little outdated on the outfit already with him, uh, but we are getting both of those. And then uh, we're getting Ember Moon, which at first I thought was Awesome Kong. A, a very bad rendering here. Uh, I don't know. Uh, hopefully they get that fixed a little bit. But Ember Moon, we haven't seen her in any lineup since the NXT Target exclusive years ago. So her welcome return to the uh, basic line, I guess, at this point. Maybe we'll get an Elite in the future. We also saw the Showdown 2 packs. Uh, hit and miss packs. Uh, same thing with these. Hit and miss a little bit. We are getting the Street Profits. Uh, basically a repaint of the basics we got in the single carded series. That's an easy pass for me, but I know there's Street Profit fans out there. Goldberg Drew McIntyre 2-pack from the WrestleMania uh, event, of course, uh, this year. So I can see people maybe wanting that. Say what you want about Goldberg. There's people like my dad that love him some Goldberg out there, just like I love the Ultimate Warrior. Uh, so we'll see with that. And then a very timely one, also a WrestleMania match, uh, Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair. I just do not like the looks of this Rhea Ripley figure. I don't know if it's just me or what. I just always felt this outfit from WrestleMania. I just felt it looks weird to me. I don't know if it's the color scheme. I expect her to be in black and gray and silvers. Just looks weird to me. 
And then one I know a lot of people are going to be jumping on, uh, myself included here, Brett the Hitman Hart, Undertaker 2-pack. Uh, that's my wheelhouse. I love Brett Hart, Undertaker, uh, interesting one. He's got the teardrop tattoo because I believe he murdered someone in prison, so I think they had to put that tattoo on there. Uh, but uh, that'll be an interesting one with the Undertaker, Brett Hart 2-pack. That'll be probably the gem of those showdowns. I think people will be jumping all over those. We also saw Ultimate Edition. We saw the render, and we know this via leaked lineups, but Alexa Bliss Ultimate Edition, I believe that's the Ultimate Edition at least, uh, but Alexa Bliss down there below. So we did see her. And then we jumped into some of the elites that we knew were released or talked about previously. Well, now we're getting image renders with these, uh, so that was pretty exciting. We got Damian Priest. Uh, his first elite figure, we are getting him in the basic mold, as you guys know. I will probably skip that basic because that elite's coming so soon on the heels of it, unless I find it really cheap clearance. Uh, but really bright purple, comes with a shirt, comes with extra hands, as you'd imagine. And then you knew this one was coming. There was no way this wasn't coming in figure form. And we're getting Drew McIntyre with his kilt and his sword. Uh, this is going to be toyetic. There's going to be a lot of people wanting this. And Drew McIntyre needed a shot in the arm as far as action figures go. We've had so many over the last year or so that all look basically the same. This is a point of difference. This is something I can really get behind. Uh, we also saw the big boss man. I believe he is the chase. Didn't show the other attire here, but... It's very much akin to the boss man as we've got twice before in the Elite line. However, he does come with that baseball hat. That's a very nice touch. Uh, of course, his nightstick and his handcuffs as well. But I think a lot of people will like this one. It's enough meat on the bone with the hat for me. Uh, I just wonder what the chase version is. We also saw Bronson Reed. You guys know I love a big figure. I love his Bam Bam Bigelow inspired gear. I think this is going to be a sleeper one. And I can see this one really climbing in value over the years. I really like the looks of this figure. I'm really excited about that one. And then we get Ali, a return to the lineup. We haven't seen him forever. We are getting an Ali. If I remember right, Ali's first elite figure was the Chase figure. So we had two there. But we're going to Ali, updated Ali figure here. And then Randy Orton in white. I know a lot of people were excited about white gear. Randy Orton with sunglasses. Glasses, a chair, of course. Uh, this one should be a popular one. It's something a little different than Randy Orton is. Randy Orton's one of those guys we get a lot of similar figures over the years from. This white tights, white trunks really adds to this, in my opinion. So I think this will be a hot one. We saw Mia Yim, a uh, long dead gimmick. We haven't seen Mia Yim in quite some time. I almost would wonder if this one would be pulled, but maybe it's too far along at this point. I don't know, but we're getting Mia Yim. Uh, what was she? Reckoning, I believe, was the name of this gimmick. I think that mask is probably removable. Hopefully it is. Uh, we could just have a straight Mia Yim figure. That would make a lot more sense. And then, oh boy, we got the old Chief in the lineup. Chief J. Strongbow. Now, Chief was a joke of the Jack's Classic Superstars days. Nothing against Chief J. Strongbow. I'm glad we're getting an elite of him. More old school characters, the better. I do not envision this one selling at all. <laughs> at all. This is going to be a tough one. Luckily, it's going to be a collector's edition, so it's not going to be in every store, but I got to think this will peg warm. You guys wouldn't believe. If you were there, you were there, and you remember it, but he peg warmed like crazy in the classic superstars uh, series back in the day. So I don't know how well his elite will do. He does come with Tatanka's tomahawk, so they're getting reuse out of that. Uh, but a very interesting character. It'll be interesting how well this one does. But old Chief J. Strongbow making his elite debut. Uh, it's okay for me. I just wonder how bad it'll peg warm, but we'll see. Uh, then we're getting Jay Uso. Is I think it's Jay. Jay or Jimmy? Jay. It's Jay Uso. I should know by now, but I don't. But uh, Jay, solo career. I mean, he was solo for about a year. It just seems strange. As we always get those two in a set together, I wonder if Jimmy and Jay will fight and say, hey, you know, I got one more figure than you do because you were off that time. Very possible. I got to think we're going to get more Jimmy and Jay Uso elites uh, based with them being with Roman Reigns right now on TV. I think we'll see some more of those elites in the future after these are all said and done as well. But we're getting that there. And then the final thing that was announced, and we did know this was coming, but it was really cool to get some glamour shots and some nice pictures. It's the Survivor Series set. These usually come out about September, uh, late October, early October, mid to late September, depending. Uh, these, I, I always end up pre-ordering from Ringside Collectibles with discount code Kyle to save 10%, of course. Uh, but then these always flood the market. It seems like Survivor Series every year goes to clearance all over the place. Uh, but we're going to have the Survivor Series set out we're getting world champion Bailey. I think this is a very strong Bailey. New face scan here. Uh, it seems to be better. I'll wait to see in hand, but it'll be really cool to get this Bailey, of course, uh, with the women's title belt. And then we're getting Keith Lee. Boy, not a lot of meat on the bone on this Keith Lee, as it's not a whole lot different than the uh, 
regular Keith Lee and the Chase Keith Lee we got sets ago. So I could see this one being the lowest seller of the bunch, but that's just me. And then you've got two of the heaviest hitters that Mattel could throw in a lineup. You've got Brett the Hitman Hart, a uh, little orange in the gear here, and comes with that hot pink chair. I'm going to have to research it for the review because I'm sure there's a story about this pink chair. Uh, somebody will have to fact check me when I'm done, but you guys know how it goes in the reviews. But uh, Brett Hart and his hot pink chair, sunglasses, I'm a little, the verdict's still out on the uh, face scan on this one. I'm not sure what to think here, but hopefully when it's in hand, we'll know a lot more. But Bret Hart, that's going to be a strong one for the Survivor Series set. And then Hulk Hogan, making another elite one in the Survivor Series. Uh, the Hulk rules, the classic one, always makes me think Hasbro Hulk Hogan figure. You get that shirt with him, a soft goods tearaway shirt. You get extra hands, you get the winged eagle belt. Uh, it's the Hulkster. He's got his headband um, to come with it. I always hate that headband though because when it's not in there you can see the little pegs in his head where those go. That's always driven me a little crazy. I wish they could fix that but you guys know Hulk Hogan figures fly off the shelf and this one will probably be no different. So interesting Survivor Series lineup and interesting there was so much packed into this a uh, day of announcements they couldn't even include this kind of stuff and there's some heavy hitters in here that they didn't even get a chance to talk about but hey that's why you have me here for. I can talk about that stuff for you. Uh, what a marathon video. Tomorrow we're going to have a marathon weekly purchases. We're not going to recap all of this. We'll hit some highlights. But there's a ton of new figure announcements from this week that I haven't even talked about that we'll have for weekly purchases, including wrestling related ones. So there is a lot going on right now. San Diego Comic Con is a tough week for news, tough week for our wallets, and just a heck of a lot of stuff going on. But exciting days as this does set up the back half in early 2022 for all of us figure collectors out there to what to anticipate that it's going to be released. So a lot of stuff from Mattel today. I don't know if there's ever been a busier San Diego Comic-Con announcement day. This just takes the cake in my book. But you guys tell me in the comments your thoughts on the day, your thoughts on the stuff. What are you excited for? What are you not excited for? What do you think about the Masters of the WWE? Do you think they've ran their course? Are you okay with it leaving and going to the Superstars section? I got to think most of my audience is wrestling related, so I think most of you guys might be happy about that. I'm a little sad about it, but uh, I was hoping to save some money. You guys saw that's not going to happen. You're going to transfer those funds right over to that Superstars line. That's how it goes. Mattel, ooh, you're, you're cagey, Mattel. Uh, but you guys tell me all your comments on what we reviewed here. Let me know your thoughts across the board. Don't forget to like this video. Long video, of course, but make sure you like it. You spent this much time here. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Like I said, tomorrow, weekly purchases, more news. So be prepared for that. Pumping out videos all the time. Giving you my thoughts out there and all kinds of reviews. So make sure you subscribe. Tell a friend. Let's keep going. Uh, we're getting dangerously close to 9,000 subscribers. Once we get to 9,000 subscribers, we're going to do the Hollywood Hulk Hogan Regular Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan in general, top 10. My personal top 10. So something to shoot for the stars for once we hit 9,000 subscribers. So be ready for that, uh, of course. Follow me on social media at SirPaul64 on Twitter, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson on Instagram. Pro Wrestling Tees, search Kyle Peterson. Get your very own Kyle Peterson t-shirt. Support the channel. So a lot of news today, a lot to digest, a lot to sleep on, honestly. Uh, but you guys tell me your thoughts in the comments, like I said. And for San Diego Comic-Con 2021 Mattel WWE announcements, I'm Kyle. I'll see you guys all real soon.